Hey everybody, I'm Sustainable Stace. This is my old dog, Soda Pop. Today we're gonna put some awe into your strawberries using some rather unconventional tools. A hole saw, a little blowtorch. I'm gonna show you a way to do a multi-year, hyper-productive, weed-free strawberry bed and truly inject the awe back into your strawberries. Here we go. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Guys, thanks a lot for joining along on this video. You might be a little bit surprised to think that there's 75 strawberry plants in this little recycle bin. When I bought my starts, I'll just show you a photo of the three bundles of 25 each. They're so lifeless and helpless, you'd be like, how could those possibly have the life force to produce a strawberry plant and then strawberries? But believe me, strawberries are wicked productive and if you put them in the right conditions, which doesn't take too much adjustment, they're not fussy, they'll really take off. You kind of got to nail pH and soil preparation. I'll cover all that. We're going to really put all the steps and stages into three buckets or three steps and I'll just guide you along the way. I'd say the middle step or bucket of activity is the most unconventional part that involves the blowtorch and the hole saw. And the third or final step that I'm going to show you in the video is really the one that makes it have legs so that over the long term it's going to be really hyper productive for the long haul. So here's our 75 plants. If you took a look at any one of them that I tug out of the sawdust and soil, they're just a whole lot of roots and a little bit of green on top and we're going to set these guys up for some crazy performance to get that awe going in your strawberries. I'm going to take you up now and show you the area where we're going to plant them. So right here, this is the bed where the strawberries are going to be injected. It's fallow, it's spring, it grew a variety of different crops last season. Behind the camera you can't see is a giant tree, probably 70-80 feet tall, a sequoia tree, which has its roots under much part of this garden, so they're always looking for the nutrition. So I have to really feed this bed very well in order for any crop in here to thrive. You can see over on your right a bunch of garlic that's been here over the winter. It's probably got another three months of growing before I harvest it, and this bed here has three irrigation drip lines which are critical to the whole success of the project. So the first of the three buckets or steps of activity is going to be about soil and irrigation prep. We're going to prep the soil and prep the irrigation so it's good to go. Then we'll move on to that unconventional second step that I think is key to the real success of the whole project. So here we go. We're going to load this up with cow manure and dig it in and prep the soil with the irrigation drip lines. Okay, so here we are. I promise in this video there will be plenty of manure, but there will be no BS. Um, <laughs> this is local cow manure. Cow manure tends to be a little bit acidic on the pH scale. So if neutral is 7 and most of your garden veggies want 6, 6.5, and, and way lower than that on the scale would be blueberries that want like 5, I think strawberries usually are in the 5.5 range, maybe as high as 6. So they like slightly acidic soil, more acidic than most of your garden veggies. So whereas this manure would be, in my mind, too fresh and too acidic to use right away with garden veggies, I'd mix it in with compost and use less of it than I would with the strawberries. This is going to be perfect. Highly nutritious. It'll offset that tree that I mentioned that has such a hunger for all the nutrition in the soil. And in total, in that bed that we're going to plant for those awesome strawberries, which is about 25 feet long or 8 meters long, I'm going to put in three of these wheelbarrows of cow manure, and then we're going to work it into the soil. So slightly acidic is really critical to these strawberry success as we work on that first bucket of activity, which is prep the soil and prep the irrigation. I'll just take a moment here. If you've never spent a bunch of time on my channel before, I spend a lot of effort and energy trying to talk about how important the soil is. You can't get healthy food out of unhealthy soil. And one of the big challenges to modern day gardening is that many people now in our community, both farming and gardening, they tend to uncover soil a lot. And when they uncover soil, it really stresses it out. Soil likes to be covered, which is why it produces weeds when it's not properly growing food. And so weeds will come up as nature's response, the way God planned it to kind of cover, protect, and nurture the soil. So I always put a layer after I've put mulch and compost down in the fall or winter when I'm putting my beds to sleep with cardboard and with coffee sacks on top. It has spent all winter now, we're coming into spring, and it's totally protected. So by the end of this project, within one day's time, it's going to be recovered again, and that'll be what we cover in step number two. So I've already dumped two loads of cow manure. This is the third and final. And you can see over my left shoulder just here, I've brought a rototiller to the party. I don't normally till soil like that, 
but because the plan is for this to be a minimum of a three year bed, I want it, the soil to be well worked and I want the nutrition of the manure to be pushed down at least uh, 10, 12 inches, so 25, 30 centimeters, so that it's well distributed for release to all the roots of all the berries over a couple of years, that's got to be the key point of nutrition is this manure going in and breaking down. So let's work this in. So in some ways the joke was on me. This was my first try this season to get my rotor tiller up. Wouldn't start. So I did the whole bed with a pitchfork, which is easier on the soil anyway. So it's all been turned by pitchfork. I raked it out smooth. I put one more wheelbarrow load of cow manure, top dressed it. So now it's got four and uh, it's ready to go. The drip lines are back down and now we're gonna put the row cover back on top of it, get her set up. And I wanna show you one other thing as I go to the camera here. I mentioned before to you about the big tree. There it is. Yep, that's big. Cause you can see how big the power pole is and you can see how much bigger the sequoia tree is so its roots are coming down right into this bed so that's what we're working with now let's get this row cover on I know that it could feel easy to just tune out a little bit of a ways into the video and go oh, okay I got it figured out when we get to the third bucket I'm just telling you when we get to the third bucket I'm gonna show you a little tip that I've been using for years it extends my strawberry growing season by up to two months in zone 8 where we live so stick around for bucket 3 and I'll show you something that's gonna be a real game changer for extending your strawberry production so as we're thinking about the bed which is well prepared we're gonna move to the second bucket of activities which is about preparing a ground cover that's weed proof and is going to give the strawberries an uncompetitive advantage over all the other weeds and plants that would try to grow up and volunteer in the bed so the width of the bed is three feet wide and that just happens to be how wide this roll of commercial grade landscape fabric is which as you can see has sexy looking symmetrical lines the length of it so a three foot wide roll of commercial grade landscape fabric the bed is 26 feet long so we're going to measure a roll of this off 26 feet I'm going to go over on my driveway where I've got asphalt millings it's the perfect setting to do what I'm about to do to create a planting template and this is where the hole saw and the little torch come in handy to set something up that's going to be incredible okay continuing on with the activities in the second bucket, which is creating this ground cover planting template we know the beds about 25 feet long I've rolled out 25 feet of landscape fabric spacing of the plants I'm hoping to be one foot between each plant so if I was doing one row I'd need 25 plants for my bed I'm doing three rows that's why I bought 75 plants this is going to help us create a planting template the space between each of these holes is one foot between these holes is one foot and I've left one spot still to drill because you may have never used a hole saw before now it goes just in my normal drill but you get a special attachment called a hole saw just like a drill bit that's in the center but then it's got a big sharp tooth around it I'll just bring it in close and we'll put it into action just once so you can see how it works it's easier to do through thin plywood but any piece of wood's going to work and it'll make sense why once we whip out the blowtorch so here on my piece of plywood I've got my marks and this is the X that marks the spot you can see the center of the hole saw has a drill bit and then slightly above it more shallow is all the little teeth of the cutting so I'm just going to put it on here I won't talk while I'm doing it and we'll just watch what happens Ta-da! there's a small perk to using a hole saw you get to create baby frisbees <laughs> Who knows, maybe baby disc golf will take off one day. Let's make our template now in our planting cover. So I'm purposely coming in a little bit so that my holes for planting aren't starting right at the immediate either end of the bed. So I'm giving myself like a hand span, eight inches, 20 centimeters. And then here, this is how it's supposed to work. And I've already tried it once and it did work. All I'm doing is lighting my flame. And then when I hit the template, the plastic melts and as it cools all the edges shrink the only challenge is sometimes when you tip over the torch it goes out so let's just give this oh, went out again almost got that one done we'll get it 
There we go. It's a bit windy today too, which doesn't help. So there, we've done our first six. Turn off the torch. Then we're gonna theoretically move the template up a little bit and make sure that the spacing allows for one foot because all of these, as I said before, are a foot apart. So this is a three foot, a two foot wide bed, but it's getting three rows in because of how we're spacing it. So that's gonna work out really nice. So let's lift this up and see what we got. There's our six circles. This one's still smoking. So we've got our six holes. We're gonna move this template up a little bit. And then when we place it right, if we get this correct, we should be one foot. There it is, exactly a foot on center, a foot on center, and a foot on center. And now I'm ready to burn the second series of six holes and we'll just make our way up and we'll have this done. It's gonna be two at a time, and I'm doing 25, so I'm gonna set this 12 and a half, 13 times to do it, and I'll have my 25 holes in three rows, 75 holes to plant, and we'll have our ground cover ready with a planting template. So I'm just gonna torch through this. Well, that's a thing of beauty. We're almost ready to move to bucket three of the activity. Now you saw it on time-lapse with the torch. Once I was using it for a few minutes, the torch got really friendly, didn't go out at all. It took me about six minutes in total to burn all the holes and I think I have 80 holes. So there's actually a little bit extra. So we got that sucker done. I'm just gonna cut it with a scissor and we'll get rolling to bucket three of activity. So if you guys think now that I've got the landscape fabric set up, I'm just gonna plant it and walk away and that's the end of the video, you're wrong. After I plant it, there's actually gonna be a couple things I wanna show you that are really critical to the welfare of the plants as they get going, and then for the production of the fruit once the plants take root. And so now let's just show you what it looks like here. I've got the ground mulch with the planting template all set up. I've got a piece of concrete at each end that's just pinning it down, and then I've just used metal fence posts down each side, and I'll just walk you down the bed so you see what it looks like, and it's all ready for planting. And then once I've got it planted out, I'll just pull it a little bit tighter and mulch along each side of the landscape fabric so that all of it is pinned tight with as little airflow underneath it as possible for weeds and stuff to take advantage. So there's the whole deal right there. Okay guys, we're on the home stretch. We're at bucket number three. We're into the planting. Now, let's take one of these little beautiful plants out that I've just put in and I want you to see how long those roots are. Here's my shovel that I'm using to go into the holes. Okay. I was a tree planter for a few seasons. You'd get failed on your trees if you did what was called a J root. So if your roots weren't straight down and they went like that, they'd be called a J root and you'd be failed and your trees would all be uprooted and you'd have to plant them again. You don't want a J root in your strawberries either. You wanna create a hole that's deeper than the depth of your roots and let your shovel gently nurse it down all the way, all the way, all the way into the hole and then tamp it down and press it down so those roots are making great contact with the soil and it's pressed down so that when the drip irrigation starts to work, the moisture goes into that recessed part. So make sure you avoid the J roots. Now let's talk about increasing productivity and extending your season for a couple extra months. This bed is designed to work for you for at least three years, maybe four. The landscape fabric should hold up. It should keep the weeds at bay. If you keep it pinned down nice and tight with things that are heavy around the perimeter, it's gonna hold and strawberries usually have a great go for at least three seasons. Here's the rub. You're gonna be so excited about your first harvest that you're gonna to tend to want those first strawberries right away. Stop the game, don't do that. As your first flowers come on, these plants are so young and such infants, you wanna pinch those flowers and remove them. The first flowers on all the plants, you remove them. What that's gonna do is drive power down into the roots and put energy into the leaves. You gotta get those solar panels out when you've got a couple more sets of leaves and the second round of flowers come, then you're good to go and then the fruit that's set's gonna be worth taking because you've basically encouraged the plant to get big enough and mature enough to be able to really bear great fruit. That's gonna stand you in great stead over the long term. So pinch those early flowers off. And now let's talk about extending the growing season, like I promised, for up to as much as two months. We're in zone eight. Here's the magic bullet. 
Its trade name is called Rime. It's also called agricultural cloth. So it's breathable, it lets light and UV through, it lets moisture through when it rains, and it does an incredible job of keeping things like birds off your strawberries and any other row crops that you have. It's also called, that's a reminder, row cover. So this big beautiful roll is actually twice as wide as it appears because this is I think a five foot roll, but it unfolds on itself and becomes 10 feet wide. So I've taken and measured out a big piece of it and it's as long as the bed here with an extra meter on each end. So the bed's 25, 26 feet long. This is like 34 feet long. It's over 10 meters long. And there's a really good reason why. Initially, I'm just gonna pull it over the bed so when it's still freezing at night like it is, these little tiny babies in the strawberry nursery can have nice warm sleeps. But it gets better than that and I'll show you what you can do with it. And it's the real thing on extending your growing season. It's what's going to happen with this bed after the garlic gets harvested in a few months and it's going to extend my season. So check this out. So in a way, so much better than just laying the Rime cloth over your strawberries, which is a nice way to protect them if you plant them early and you're concerned about frost or you don't have a deer proof garden, this is the next level. This is the magic bullet. You put together some rebar, just pieces of rebar in the ground, half in and half out. You take some PVC pipes and bend them over. Don't let them catch your face as you're putting them in. You build a little structure like that and if you do that over your strawberries, you could put netting over it to keep the birds out but still get full sun. You can put the Rime cloth over it like I showed you earlier and that'll be a great little warm tent under there and again protect them. And you could put plastic over it to create a full on greenhouse that in cooler months would really extend your growing season up to a month additional early and a month additional late. Add two more months to your growing season. Amazing outcomes with a little beauty like this. Okay guys, I think that's a wrap for putting the awe back in your strawberries. To review the three buckets, we figured out how to prep the soil and prep the irrigation so it would be ready with lots of cow manure, lots of nutrition in the soil. Then we made those baby frisbees for our grid, our planting template. We used the hole saw and burned out with a torch all the little planting holes to create a grid. And then we got to planting, we avoided any J roots, we made sure that we were gonna pinch off those early flowers, and then we used the cloth to cover over the bed. That's what I'm gonna do last as I wind up the video. Cover it over, have it all stretched out so they're snug, and then you can look longer term at doing the hoop house like I showed you, and extend your bed's growing season by probably a month at each end. Thanks for watching, have a good one.